Hi everybody, Steven here. So there are times when you need to change your password in your environment, uh, or passwords in your environment. For example, an administrator leaves your, your organization, so you'll have to change the passwords, let's say. Or it's considered good practice or best practices to change your passwords periodically to reduce the likelihood of some kind of security vulnerabilities. Well, that's what this video is all about. We're going to take a look at the password manager in the VMware Cloud Foundation SDDC manager. So stick around. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. Um, so in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the SDDC manager's password management. Uh, this shouldn't be a long video. should be relatively short. Uh, now, what I normally like to do at this point, before we begin, uh, if this is stuff that you're interested in, um, please support the channel. It's very simple. Just click on that subscribe button. Totally free. Uh, another way to support the channel is I've got super thanks enabled. Totally up to you. Um, and also sharing uh, links with the channel or with the videos is another way to support it and liking as well. So anyways, enough of that. Why don't we jump into it? Okay, so we can see that I am signed into my SDDC manager. Um, here's my dashboard I'm actually looking at. If I scroll down from over here on the far left and I scroll down to uh, management, uh, password management, it's pretty straightforward. You'll see I've got tabs here for my ESXi server, vCenter server, my platform services controllers, my NSX managers, and the built-in backup user, right? You'll notice again, rotation schedule is disabled for all of them by default here. If I click on all these, it's showing disabled, okay? And same thing with my ESXi host. Now, let's look at the ESXi host first of all. So first you see I've got my root users for each of the hosts. Uh, there's also this other account. This is a service account created uh, during the bring up process. So, so SVC-VCF-the host name. I can click on rotate all right now. If I hit that, it'll actually go through and rotate the passwords. It will change the passwords. It'll make uh, like this 20 character password type of thing, right? So it'll rotate those passwords. Um, I can say, if I can select individual users if I want, let's say I'm just gonna pick my root users just for argument's sake, and I can say rotate now. Uh, if I say rotate now, let's just go ahead and hit that and I'll say rotate. Uh, it will go out, and let's get my task back up here. It'll go out and change the password of the root account of all those users. Now, we'll just let that finish. Now, uh, what I can do or what I cannot do with the ESXi host, let's uh, just get rid of this so I can get a little bit more real estate. So what I cannot do with my ESXi host is set it up to auto rotate for me based on a schedule. Let's look at my vCenter server. So my vCenter server root account here, uh, again, I can actually go in and let's say uh, I want to schedule this. I don't want to rotate it now, but I want to schedule rotation. Notice I could schedule this to rotate every 30, 60, or 90 days. Okay. Uh, let's say I'll select 30 days and I'll say yes. Okay. And it says credentials update again in progress, right? Uh, so we should. So notice over here now it says root. So this password will be changed every 30 days. Uh, if I go to the platform services controllers, again, same kind of thing. I can rotate it now. I could uh, schedule rotation. Same thing with my NSX manager. Again, I can go in and change some of these and schedule them to change or rotate automatically for me, right? So the only one that you cannot schedule rotation for is your ESXi host. Now that already finished, let's go back into my root here. Notice again, I select, I can say rotate now or uh, schedule rotation, right? Um, so there are uh, limitations when it comes to the ESXi host on what we can and cannot do. Now, how do we figure out what the password is? <laughs> it just changed the password of my root user on ESX. How do I figure it out? Let's, let's see that in a second. Actually, before we jump into taking a look at, at that password, uh, why don't we do this? Why don't I show you this? Notice right now I've got my ESXi, uh, I've got a root user on my ESXi selected. See the little, uh, the three dots here? If I click on that, I can say rotate now. We just went through and talked about that. I can say update, and update allows you to go in and manually change it. So I could put in the, uh, the, the, the new password if I want to. So if you want to manually change it from there, you could do that. Um, I'm going to cancel that. This other one here, remediate. What's remediate? Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. 
<laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> Got to take that call. All right. Sorry about that. Had a quick phone call there. Um, so what we left off at was remediate. Now, what does uh, remediate do for me? Uh, remediate. Okay. So first of all, one of the things is you've got the SDDC manager managing your software defined environment, right? Your software defined data center. So it's managing your host, your vCenter servers, NSX and stuff. Anything that you do within the SDDC manager, you really shouldn't also be doing inside, let's say NSX or, or ESX or vCenter. An example of that would be passwords. Since the, um, the SDDC manager needs to maintain these passwords, it needs to know what passwords those hosts have, your, your NSX managers, your vCenter servers, all that kind of stuff. So if you go in and let's say you mainly change the password on one of your ESXi hosts, it's not going to be in sync with the SDDC manager and you're going to have issues managing that, that host. It'll, it'll, it'll give you some problems type of thing. This is what the remediate is. It basically says, hey, update the password that you know over there on that ESXi host and update it to the SDDC manager so it's aware of it. So that's what remediate is. Okay. The last thing, uh, no, the second last thing I actually want to show you. So I rotated my host passwords, my root passwords. What's the password? <laughs> I don't know, right? So this is where there's a couple of methods for us to do this. Let me SSH into my SDDC manager. This is one method. And let me just change my size here. Change settings. Let's just change the size. I'm going to 12. And you folks know I always like to change the background color. Let's uh, go with something like that. So I'm going to log in as VCF. I'm going to type in my password for the VCF user. Oops. Did I just get an error there? Oh, shoot. Let's try that again. Okay, so I'm logged in. Let me uh, let me just change the font size just so it's a little larger. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to there, run this command lookup underscore passwords. When I hit enter, notice the, one of the things it says right here. You must have the admin role to do this. Now, you're going to look at this and go, whoa, that means somebody can hack their way in. Again, the, uh, it's going to ask you um, to, to uh, authenticate, and I'll show you that in a second. So the first thing that comes up says, what entity type do I want to pull up the passwords for? And you see there's a whole whack load of them there. Mine was from my ESXi server, so I'm going to type in ESXi. I'm going to hit enter. Now, these next ones here, I'm not sure what they are. I've been looking around, haven't found anything. So enter the page number, optional. I'm just going to hit enter. Enter the page size, default 50. I guess this would, I'm guessing here that if you've got a whole whack load of ESXi servers, how many pages do you want uh, and how many entries, I guess, on each page? That's my guess. I haven't found anything. If somebody knows about this and can share a link to what the stuff is, I'd appreciate it. Anyways, I'm just going to accept the default. Now it's asking me for the username. This person must have the admin role, okay? So I'm going to type in VCF admin at vclass.local. That was one of my users I gave the admin role back in uh, my user management video, right? I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to type in the password. Hopefully that's the right password. There we go. And it spits back out the, uh, let's go full screen. It spits back out. Here's my ESXi. Here's its IP address and its host name. You'll see the workload, okay, whatever, that's the name of the workload. And then you see the root user, and there you see my password. I don't care that you folks see it on YouTube. <laughs> I get blown away anyways, right? So there you'll see, again, here's my other host, host 2. There's the root password, host 3, and root password, and so on, okay? So this is how you can, and you can save this to a file if you wanted to, let's say, all right? Um, there's another way to do this, and this is with the API. So I'll show you that one in a second. All right, so another way we could do this is using the APIs. Now, I'm not an API guy. I barely know how to spell API. But anyways, uh, this is kind of a neat tool that they put into the SDDC manager. It's called the Developer Center. So let me click on that. In here, they got the API reference guide. Like I said, I'm not an API guy. I barely know how to spell it. 
I'm going to go into this API Explorer. From there, again, you get different categories. You'll notice one of the categories is credentials. I'm going to open that up. And then over here, I'm going to run the get command. I'm going to click on the get. And then at this point, uh, let me scroll down. You'll see the tryout section. In the tryout section, this is where you can specify what you're looking for. Like, what's the resource name? Uh, maybe I want to look for a particular host or a certain IP. Uh, right now, uh, under resource type, this is where you specify if it's an ESXi host, vCenter, whatever the case may be. So mine was my ESXi host. Uh, again, you can specify the domain name. Here's that page number and page size stuff, as I mentioned before. So the page number must be a positive number, starts with zero, whatever. And then the page size must be a positive number. Um, zero as a page size returns all records. Um, in one page anyways okay so I guess there's a way for you to split it up whatever and then the account type okay all I care about is I want to actually pull up the information uh, for my ESXi host I'm gonna click on execute and at that point I get my response now I'm gonna click on this little download link here so I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna download uh, this file for me now I've already run it a couple times you can see this so it's got this page of credentials that saved it to um, my default folder I'm going to click on that and it's opened it up with notepad and then from there when I go inside here you see the different services you'll see my ESXi host right there if I scroll down you see the IP address uh, you see the resource name resource type uh, the domain name uh, if I go through here now uh, here is my root user and guess what there's the password if I look at the uh, now another entry here uh, this is ESXi02 if I scroll down if I keep scrolling down, you'll see uh, here's a root password right there. The root user and its password right there. So that's another way to do it if you don't want to do the command line stuff. Again, I'm not the prettiest, but again, it's not that bad. Let me kill that. Um, like I said, I don't care if you see my passwords there. <laughs> my lab environment gets blown away pretty much every time I do something. Uh, but that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. Um, if so, please, if you found it entertaining, hit that thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Also, uh, please support the channel. It's very simple. It's free. Just click on that uh, subscribe link, okay? Uh, also, sharing the links as well also supports the channel. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, or any kind of, uh, you know, if you're looking for me to do something, please leave it in the comments down below. I'll see if I can get to it. I do have limited resources. Uh, but that's it. I got more videos coming up really soon. So see you in the next one. Bye now.